What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew to go over the top games releasing in May of 2023. And we've done this, this type of video before for the month of April, but we basically going to break down the games that we are looking forward to for the coming month of May. And honestly, what's going to happen is we'll talk through the list of games and then we'll jump into which games we are feeling the most anticipated for and why we are excited for them. And then we'll jump into some indies to kind of give you guys a kind of a quick look at some smaller publishers that are going to drop some possible hidden gems along the way. So let's jump right into it. So first off, when I'm looking at the list of games that we kind of are looking forward to, or at least have our eye on as a minimum thought, I'm thinking firstly, Redfall is going to be the big game that a lot of people have been talking about dropping for the Xbox and PC on, on, May, on May 2nd. We have Hogwarts Lexi is getting its PlayStation 4 and Xbox One port. For, uh, and obviously that's going to be dropping May 5th. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is coming out for the Switch on May 12th. Is obviously that's going to be a big game everyone's looking forward to. Amnesia the Bunker is coming on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S on May 23rd. The Outlast Trials is going to drop for all the next uh, next gen consoles I think and even I think the uh, this, the older ones too but definitely the next gen consoles on May 19th. Uh, and we also have Lord of the Rings Gollum is dropping on all the consoles on may 25th and some of the indies that we are also going to be talking about are look at least looking at uh overall darkest dungeon 2 for the pc on may 8th uh miss mia sama misama chronicles is going out for everything on may 23rd and bread and fred is coming out for pc on may 23rd as well and uh well all i gotta <laughs> say is there's a lot there's a list of games that are here some interesting ones for sure some big name ones that we've we all know are dropping this month. Um, I think April had a lot of stacked roster when you look at overall in May. It definitely has less of that, less of number. Um, but let's let's talk about what games we are feeling the most anticipated for. And I'm gonna go to hockey first. What is your most anticipated game? Yeah, so mine is Redfall. So uh, like you said, a lot of people know about Redfall, uh, but if you don't, it is uh, Bethesda's new uh, Vampire Slayer game. Right, so it's going to be a $70 game on PC and on Xbox if you don't have Game Pass. But if you do have Game Pass, uh, you know, you're free to play day one, which is awesome. That's how we're going to be playing it. Um, and it's a first person shooter open world, but it also has a hero shooter aspect as well. Uh, there's four different characters you can choose from. So it gives you a good, you know, uh, gameplay uh, diversity that. You can use one character to do you know one thing and then you know one of your co-op buddies can be another character or you can be the same character as well so it gives you a, a you know a variety of different ways to play the game um and it's all about vampires so you're going to be killing vampires you're going to be killing cult leaders uh, but i'm really excited to just play the co-op game uh in general with uh you guys obviously on game pass and um there is there has been a I guess a uh, news or breaking news that came out that it's going to be 30 FPS for the console. So that was a little disappointing for us, but we're still going to play it day one and, and see, you know, if that really has a huge effect on it. But I, I am very excited to play this game, have been as soon as it uh, dropped to come out. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Redfall, a lot of people have been throwing their comparisons, right? They've been saying uh, that it's kind of like a Far Cry or it's, uh, you know, like multiple different other open world games like a borderlands yep, yep. that um and it, honestly i feel like when you make that comparison to far cry or borderlands it kind of puts it in perspective a lot of people are always saying well no, it's open world game you can travel anywhere you want i think this is going to drift along the lines of those titles which is not a bad thing i mean it, it, i think people who are expecting to see some you know breathtaking graphics from redfall i mean i i don't know if you're gonna get that breathtaking graphics but you're gonna get a kind of a borderlands or far cry game i mean far cry has always looked pretty damn good but you know borderlands is a cartoonish kind of you know team up shooter game um and people still had a lot of fun with that series so i mean at the end of the day i do kind of look at that but the big yeah the big concern is the 30 fps and people that have uh it's like if you go to the olden days if you would think back a lot of games were 30 fps right and uh, there's that debate on, you know, is it going to be uh, the same experience as if you what you're expecting of a next gen experience is going to be that level or not? And I think, you know, if people will make the case for both ways, both ways, they'll say, well, 30 FPS, 30 FPS games have been super successful, like Bloodborne or 
you know, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. They've been 30 FPS games that have been really, really good. But it's also in that same mo uh, mindset saying, well, PC's dropping with 60 FPS, but X Series X and S are both dropping at a at 30 FPS. So it's kind of like that, you know, what what's going on behind the scenes, right? And I think that's something that a lot of people are concerned about. But a lot of previews so far have, have said nothing but positive. So it, we got to see it to believe it. And we're going to do a definitely do a full review of that game. Uh, when it does release but Legilica, any words before i jump to you here yeah i mean to me there is some disappointment when it comes to the 30 not so much that there hasn't been successful 30 fps games um because we've seen it over the years and and a lot of nintendo games are 30. i think the more disappointing thing is that the console x is running at 30 right as you know this is supposed to be you know this is an xbox first party game and it's going to run performance wise a little weaker at launch uh, compared to PC. And so as Xbox as X owners, to me, that's disappointing. And, you know, they compared it to Far Cry and Borderlands, right? Uh, a mixture of those two games. Far Cry 6 was the 60 FPS option. Far Cry 5 had an update that made it 60 FPS. Borderlands 3, I believe, also had a 60 FPS mode. So, you know, the games that they've been compared to ran at a higher performance on console. So that's the only disappointing part. It doesn't mean the game will be a flop. And a lot of the previews we've seen talk about gameplay and talk about kind of the world has been positive. But the weird part has been like, well, what is the performance of the game on PC and, and console? And that's that's the part that's kind of the big mystery. But we're going to try it out uh, and we still are excited about playing it. Yeah, and so, Frank, what's your most anticipated game of the list we talked about? Yeah, and I just want to clarify when you made that list earlier, that's not the complete list yeah. of games for the entire month, but this is kind of a list of the games that we find to be the most interesting. And I got to talk about my you know, game that I thought would be the game of the year this year, and that is Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And we actually got you know a nice little preview drop this week. A lot of the big uh, game reviewers got a chance to play about 70 minutes to I think maybe a couple hours of Legend of Zelda this week. And listen, I, I've been extremely excited. This is the sequel to Breath of the Wild, uh, which is a highly critically, critically acclaimed game, game of the year at the time. So obviously a lot of pressure on this game. Uh, it's $59.99 if you pre-ordered it, but $69.99. This is the first $70 Nintendo game that has come out. So um, I, I don't think that's a great milestone for us consumers, but this is uh, kind of their big premium price game that is coming. And I got to tell you, all the news that we've seen, including the trailers, it just feels like this world is vast. There's a lot of Sky Islands is kind of the big emphasis in this game. You see a lot of different, uh, you know, things that you can do, which is such a huge part, uh, open world aspect, creativity. And that's the word, creativity. There's a lot of these different um, things you can do, different like skill sets and different, uh, different things that you're like Link is able to do now that you can kind of go through the world in different aspects. You can build rocket ships, you can build boats, you can... Uh, fuse weapons that is going to help with the weapon durability that I know was a big problem for a lot of people which brings a lot of excitement to it now things I did hear in the preview you can only fuse two items together as weapons so you're not going to be able to create these giant five or six things together at once so I did hear that um, that you can only fuse two things as a weapons another big question is dungeons we have not gotten confirmation if there will be dungeons I do think dungeons would really elevate this game and differentiate it from Breath of the Wild, not just the sky and the normal ground, but dungeons in this game, I really hope is going to be in it. And another thing I did here, gameplay is a little more complicated. Breath of the Wild was very, very simple gameplay, but in the preview, they said that gameplay takes a little bit getting used to. So this is not going to be a very simple game, but I am still very excited about this one. Yeah, I feel like when I'm looking at, you know, excitement, I, I kind of will piggyback off of the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom a lot because you know, we we've all played that you you know breath of the wild and we all love the way the game plays and how it is and i think the expectation of tears of the kingdom is that game of the year level right and i think that's really the biggest game to look out for because of the fact that you know nintendo and their legend of zelda games have never disappointed i mean whether you're talking about a a quote-unquote bad legend of zelda game we're talking about games that you might people might be like in love with still you know what i mean like i feel like that they were still good games but they've never really been a bad game so 
Tears of the Kingdom is getting to that level of can it match Breath of the Wild or can it elevate itself above it? And if it can elevate itself, and you're talking about a game of the year candidate yeah. again, right? And I think that's going to be the question that we have to see because I do agree with you. Look at a lot of the things that they did were looking great. I mean, we were always on the boat of you need to have multiple layers right to this map. If you're going to keep a similar map to, to the Hyrule like area, you need to make a above and below. And they kind of showed off a little bit of that um, in some of the trailers. So I feel like that's already one thing that was checked off the list of they needed to include it for me to feel more excited. And yeah, but dungeons you know, we didn't see, right? That's like something. A, yeah, we that, didn't that see this confirmed by anybody. Yeah. 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 And so that's going to be the big question of what's going to happen when it comes to dungeons. I feel like, you know, I, I, I like the way that the game was formatted last time where it was almost like the entire game is a dungeon within itself um, kind of concept. It was different. Um, but I do agree with you. I feel like the classic dungeons where you can go explore something, find a dungeon, maybe get some items or get something that could help you on your journey. I think that is always appealing to Legend of Zelda fans. Um, and that's kind of like what my anticipated game, but I, I kind of want to piggyback on. I just want to mention quickly um, the Outlast Trials. It's not going to be a long dive in, in my opinion. Um, I feel like uh, when the PC. stuff yeah, for the PC is coming out yeah. for, and I feel like the Outlast Trials is, is supposed to be a prequel to the Outlast series. Outlast is a horror survival survival based game that honestly has been doing very well over the years and has gained a lot of fandom. Um, so getting seeing this kind of hidden behind the scenes of all these other games is kind of surprising that not as many people are talking about it. Um, and if this game can land, I think that'd be a really good thing to kind of give. The Outlast series a full circle kind of glimpse into the story yeah. itself, you know, because I feel like that the is a very interesting concept. Um, and I've always watched videos of people playing that, and I guess you just bugged out seeing people yeah. like avoiding uh, getting <laughs> murdered left and right. Um, but a hockey anything? But before we move on to the next thing, man, uh, just for Zelda, uh, Legends of Zelda. So I am still playing through the, the first game, so I'm slacking a little bit. So I'm going to finish that obviously before the next game comes out. But yeah, I'm just excited for the you know the new abilities that they showed off in the trailers. Like Langella Hill said, a lot of new and cool things are, are going to be coming. So just excited to play uh, you know the new Zelda game. Yeah, man. So with that being said, let's jump into the indies, and this is obviously made for by smaller publishers. So. We as uh, smaller developers really, and we have to kind of see about any of these that were on the list that we are interested in. And I'll and I'll definitely go first here. I think Darkest Dungeon 2, which is coming out for the PC on May 8th, is honestly a very interesting game, mainly because it's a very it's a cult classic. A lot of people are really interested and excited about this game. It's coming out for $30. Um, it originally started out on the Epic Store. Um, and you know, people are really excited because of the fact that it continues the, the from where it left off from previously. It's basically like an art. It's an RPG game that's kind of like a turn-based RPG um, that basically is going to be divided into what they call five acts or five confessions. And essentially, you get to pick which one you kind of want to start with, and you go through the entire story. You get to face off against specific bosses based on which confession you're going to play through. And basically, what's going to happen is before you start on your journey, you're going to go to a crossroads. You'll be a bunch of people at like a, a at like an inn, and you're going to pick which who is going to be a part of your party going forward. Kind of like that Dungeons and Dragons kind of feeling and depending on who you pick, you're going to have different story arcs or have different rivalries or possible love interests throughout the entire story. And depending on how well you develop your relationship will strengthen your character in battle or possibly have new movesets that you learn. And one thing that a lot of people were really excited about with this game was basically the way you earn, you have your ability, right? Because normally it used to be based on the armors you possess. But instead, they're almost going to be creating some sort of a kind of like a skill tree that now kind of expands what you can do with it, which I really am interested in and seeing how how they really uh, capture that. And the fact that they already gave kind of like an early access beta to people for, for people to try out. A lot of people were really happy with what they saw. So this dropping, obviously, uh, you know, pretty early on in May is going to get people really excited to play it. 30 bucks. I'm I'm, I'm interested to see how this game turns out. But Let's go to Langella Kill next. What was your anticipated yeah. ending? Let me talk about Bread and Fred on the PC. <laughs> uh, made by uh, Sandcastle Studios. This is a co-op platformer, but you can play single player. Um, they have a speedrunner mode, and this is two penguins trying to reach the top of a snow summit. So it's a platformer. 
teamwork, working together, but you're also attached with a rope. So you have to time your jumps. You have to kind of work together to get to the top of the summit. And this could be a good bonding experience or a molding experience for you and whoever you play with. Um, but this is a cartoony, very charming game. Um, and I do think this is just a kind of like those small platformers that we've seen some indie uh, developers make that have been successful and this feels like one that could be now this is again on the pc you can try out a free demo it's only two gigabytes big so this is a small game that you can try out with somebody or by yourself and i do think it's a very charming and cute game um that i'm excited to see how it turns out and that yeah. is on the 23rd of may yeah man it should be interesting those co-op games are like uh hidden gem of the past but yeah. hockey what are you excited for with these indies yeah, so I might be butchering the name, but I, I have it down as Miasma Chronicles. <laughs> Miasma Chronicles. Um, and yeah, so I didn't really know a whole lot about this game, uh, but I took a look at the gameplay. It seemed very interesting. It's a action adventure, like strategy game. Uh, the gameplay is going to be a lot of exploration, uh, turn-based with a little bit of um, RPG elements, I guess they explained it as. Uh, it follows uh, this kid named Elvis and his older robotic brother, um, fighting this mysterious, uh, I guess this mysterious force called the Miasma. And they have a, uh, they, well, it's not they, but the robotic brother helps you through all the levels and you have this glove that controls the Miasma. So it's kind of a very unique game. It is $50 and you're thinking about indie games. They're usually not that expensive. Um, I'm probably going to wait a little bit to see more gameplay before I actually spend the 50 bucks, but it does seem very cool, very interesting. It looks like it's going to have a pretty interesting and, and unique story as well. So out of the indie games that we had listed, uh, I picked that one because I thought it was just a, an original, interesting game in general. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming, dropping by. And what do you think about the different games we talked to today? Let us know what you are interested in in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. You can find us on Twitch. We stream two to three days a week and that is located in the description below. You can also follow us on all of our socials also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>